It's 3 of 31, brought to you by the Next Generation 2019 GMC Sierra Denali with the world's first available six-function multi-pro tailgate. I say that all while watching Fridge stand. Is that actually Pebble Beach behind you? Is it Spyglass? Is it one of the Mm. other courses? Because you are in a gorgeous, gorgeous locale right now. You know, I think this is uh, Spanish Bay, actually. Oh. Like, th- that's uh, that's the one that's behind me here. It is beautiful. I know somebody who uh, played it the other day. It was Golf Course 1, that individual zero. Right. But uh, <laughs> it is it is beautiful here. Really looking forward to coming back to snowy and cold Toronto. That's <laughs> uh, not that bad. But with your luck, it'll be a snowstorm. You don't have time to play golf, do you? <laughs> no, no, uh, no, no, no. That's too no. bad. I, oh. I, I wish. Quick denial no. there, Tim. No. No, quick, yeah. quick denial yeah. there. Yeah. Yeah. He's got to keep up the charade that this is work. <laughs> yes, yes. <laughs> all right, uh, Free, let's get right to it. Jim Montgomery, I know you've been burning the phones all day like everyone else. What can you tell us that we don't already know? Who? I mean, there's a lot of rumors. Um, you know, I'm not going to throw any gasoline on the fire with that. Um, because I don't like I don't know 100 percent what the incident is yet. I don't. I, I can't. You know. I know you're asking me to tell you what exactly what happened. I can't tell you that because I don't. I don't have it confirmed, and I'm not going to guess Got it. on on what I don't have confirmed. You know. I think one thing that is becoming clear is if you go back a couple weeks ago to when the Calgary Flames went through their situation with Bill Peters, that took more than three days. And it was a resignation as opposed to a firing. This took less than 48 hours, and it was a firing, which says to everybody involved here that whatever was involved, Dallas had documentation, and there was no wiggle room, and that they weren't going to, uh, you know, what, even if there was anybody in the organization who said, give them a second chance, it wasn't going to be possible. So whatever they had, they had documentation of it. And, you know, I think the other thing here, though, is that, you know, Jim Montgomery has a a young family, and I think people are trying to be protective of that, and they're trying to be as tight as they can on any information as to what exactly occurred. Is the NHL worried at all about having more clarity on things like this after what happened with Bill I think Peters? they know I think they know exactly Tim I think they know exactly what happened okay okay so let's talk about yesterday yeah. then and I, I don't think they I don't sure I mean we I mean I don't know if there's anything else you want to ask me about this but I think the NHL knows exactly what happened and uh, I don't think they can they don't consider it on the same level as what happened with Bill Peters you know for example last night if you watch the media conference with um with the commissioner and the deputy commissioner, we asked them, are there any more people uh, under investigation for what uh, Bill Peters was forced to resign for? And they answered no. And somebody actually did say to me today, if I'd asked that question, just if there was anyone under investigation, the answer might have been different. So they don't right. consider it the same thing. Right. That's why I asked you the question, because I heard you ask the question of Gary Bettman and get the no answer. And I wondered if there's any clarity there. And you have provided that. What was the feeling among hockey people uh, about what Gary Bettman delivered last night? Were they surprised at how much teeth it had? Were they surprised how quickly or how long it took? What, what did you get? What was the feeling when people walked out of that room? Well, for one thing, Tim, the statement he read to the media and to the public, he also read it in the room. Uh, There was so basically what he told us, he told them. I think everybody knew it was coming. They expected it to come. Uh, They were not surprised. I think they support it. You know, in his address to the media and the fans, the commissioner said, we don't like surprises. I don't think that message was really for the media or the fans. I think that message was to the teams. And, you know, if you look at this Dallas situation today, the league was well aware of, of obviously what was going on before it became public. And, and that is that the days of 
teams handling things themselves. You know, for example, we talked to Brendan Shanahan today about Mike Babcock and and Mitch Marner and the and the thing that happened there with Babcock and Marner. And, you know, he said at the time, you know, it was dealt with between Shanahan, Lou Lamorello, the coach, the player, I think they, the agent, I think they even mentioned, I can't remember if they mentioned the family or not, but that was the way that things got dealt with is that everything was, you know, you, we handle it ourselves. That's not going to happen anymore. And I think teams got that message loud and clear. I think we all understand and, and you know, like we're being – we're getting a, a new big story now, Tim, almost on a daily basis. Mm -hmm. And I think everybody understands that until this all gets shaken out, um, you know, we this is where we have to go. I don't think there's much choice. Obviously, conduct in the world of hockey is the story right now. But there, there was other business that kind of made headlines today from the Board of Governors, mm -hmm. specifically the World Cup of Hockey in 2021, which we found out today, Freege, is not happening. A lot of people believed that the CBA was going to be allowed to go through 2022. We'd have a World Cup. That is not now taking place, according to Gary Bettman. Why is that not taking place? I don't think they could make a deal with the players. You know, I think the players wanted the world. They were the players were willing to agree to a World Cup, if there was a willingness to also go to the Olympics the next year, uh, in 2022. And I don't think at this point in time the league is prepared to do that. Um, you know, they were coming on a, a 13 months out from when they were hoping that World Cup was to take place, and they basically were in a situation where I think they realized they weren't going to get a deal done uh, in any a short period of time where they could put it together and announce it. So I, I think that that's kind of the factor. Um, I, since then, you know, I think there's talks that the players in the league will try to do something else maybe in 2024. We'll see. But the Olympics are a big deal to the players, and right now, the league is not inclined to go there. They don't like the Olympics in the non-North American time zones. They also don't like the fact that they have to pay the insurance or transportation costs themselves. You know, Russia was different in Sochi. That was taken care of. So that's why everybody went. Until those issues are sorted out, I don't think the two of them were prepared to agree. I think what you'll see in uh, 2021 is an all-star game that involves like a World Cup-style format. Uh, you know, maybe Canada and the, all the different nations, three on three, something like that. It's not the same, but that's kind of what they'll go for. And uh, we'll see where we go from there. But I think, Sid, the, the whole thing about the players wanting to go to the Olympics and the league not yet committing to go there, that had a lot to do with why we're not going to have a World Cup. Hmm. Uh, anything else that we need to look out for from the Board of Governors meetings? Well, the other thing was the salary cap. And normally at this at this meeting, the commissioner gives an estimate on next year's salary cap. And he didn't do that this time, which was different for him. Now, the cap this year is at 81.5. Some of the teams have said, you know, initially they were kind of thinking 83.5 at most. Now they're kind of thinking maybe a bit more than that, maybe 84, maybe 85. Uh, and the reason is that, and the commissioner was careful to say this will happen in negotiation with the players. To keep this really simple once the original number is set the players have the right to lift it up to an extra five percent they used to go to that five percent all the time they haven't in recent years they've been closer to around one percent simply because of the high escrow payments that can create but next year because next year could have been a strike slash lockout year there were a lot of players who structured their deals where they got less paid less cash next season so the actual cash payout for next season is lower than normal and I think some teams and the league are hopeful that the players might be willing to raise that number a bit because the escrow won't be as high. We'll see where that goes. But some teams that were thinking maybe 83, 83 and a half are now hopeful they might get to 84 or 85. Hmm. Elliot Freeman live from Pebble Beach, California at the Board of Governors meetings. Freeze, before we let you go, I don't know where the closest green is to you behind you on that beautiful golf course. Uh, uh, three options here on the answer. Would you need A, a seven iron to reach the green, mm -hmm. B, a nine iron to mm -hmm. reach the green, C, it doesn't matter, you suck at golf. 
Actually, it would be D, none of the above, because I'm actually closest to the tee box. Oh, and I if see. I was pulling out a, uh, uh, if I was hitting from here, A, it would be one of the worst drives of my <laughs> life, and B, it would be a lot more than a seven iron, because I think this is a par five. It's a pretty long hole. Okay. Has anyone teed off while you're standing there? Because <laughs> that might be nerve-wracking. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Someone has, yeah? You know, I How good you. are you?